Herodotus, the sacred animals of ancient Egypt, dedicated to Decayla in California. Hello, this is Bertie, and I'm here with some more from Herodotus, the father of history, who lived two thousand five hundred years ago. Herodotus was a Greek who liked to travel. He went around much of the Persian Empire, including Egypt, and wrote down what he found there. A fair bit of what we know about life in ancient Egypt comes to us from Herodotus. In the last episode, I told you about some of the wild animals of ancient Egypt that Herodotus mentioned. In this episode, I'm going to be focusing on the animals that the Egyptians worshipped as gods. The holiest of all animals in ancient Egypt were cows and bulls. The ancient Egyptians were not the only people to worship cattle. For example, in ancient times, bulls were worshipped on the Greek island of Crete. The home of the bull god, the Minotaur, and cattle are sacred to Hindus to this day. And perhaps you know the story of Moses from the Bible. He and his fellow Israelites escaped from captivity in Egypt and crossed the desert. On the way, they paused while Moses climbed up Mount Sinai to fetch a stone tablet on which were written. The Ten Commandments, or laws like "You shall not steal" and "You shall not kill." While Moses was away up the mountain, some of his followers lost faith in God and began to worship a golden calf. So, why would people worship cows? Well, in many religions, gods and animals are associated with ideas. People might worship a bull because he represents strength and masculinity, and they might worship a milk-giving cow because she represents motherhood and nurturing. Perhaps they would pray to their cattle gods for a strong, healthy family and nation. In ancient Egypt, bulls or cows were sometimes seen as gods on earth. For example, in the city of Memphis, people worshipped a bull called Apis, otherwise known as Happy. The priests of Memphis always kept one real-life bull to worship. They always chose a bull to represent Apis, who was black with a white crescent shape on his side or a white triangle on his forehead. When the bull died, they found another bull with similar markings. But the ancient Egyptians were not vegetarians, and unlike Hindus today, they did sometimes eat beef. The sacrifice of a bull was an extremely solemn ceremony for the ancient Egyptians. The priests would choose a black bull and check that it did not have a single hair that was not completely black. When they had killed it, they would cook the meat of the body, and they saved the head of the bull. They prayed that all their evil and bad fortune should be transferred onto the head of the bull. Then they would take the head to the market, and if there were any Greek traders there, Herodotus tells us, they would sell it to them. Presumably, the Greek traders did not suspect that the head was full of sin and evil. But if the priests could not find any Greeks, they threw the bull's head into the river and got rid of it that way. This odd ceremony was a way of getting rid of evil. There's also a similar idea in the Bible, when the people of Israel prayed all their sins onto a goat and then cast the goat out into the desert. To this day, if we say that somebody is a scapegoat, we mean that they are being blamed for other people's wrongdoing. Bulls were far from the only sacred creatures in ancient Egypt. The god Horus was often shown as a man with the head of a hunting bird called a falcon. Falcons have fantastic eyesight, and as they soar through the sky, they can spot tiny animals on the ground. Kings are also meant to be far-sighted and wise, and so Horus, the falcon god, was closely associated with the Egyptian pharaoh. The pharaoh may even have been the god Horus in human form, or so the ancient Egyptians believed. 
I mentioned in an earlier episode how the Egyptians loved cats. Cats kept families safe by killing snakes and rats. The cat goddess was Bastet, and every year the ancient Egyptians celebrated her with a huge party. They sailed down the Nile to her temple at Perbast, singing and dancing and rocking the boats on the way. Herodotus tells us that if a home caught fire, people would save the cats before trying to save themselves, and if a household cat died, the whole family would shave their eyebrows to show their grief. And if any one killed a cat, they were guilty of murder, and the penalty was death, which shows how much the ancient Egyptians respected cats. By the way, our word "cat" comes from the North African word "kata," but the ancient Egyptian word for cat was "mao," because cats make a sound like "mao." Dogs were also important. The god Anubis, who guarded the underworld, had a dog's head. The head of Anubis looks a little bit like a greyhound. There are also dog breeds today called Basenji and Pharaoh hounds that come down to us from ancient Egypt. Rich Egyptians kept gazelles that were renowned for their grace and beauty. A gazelle, by the way, is a type of African deer. The Egyptian queen Isiemkeb loved her pet gazelle so much that when the deer died, she was mummified. And placed with jewels inside an ornate box called a sarcophagus. The god Sobek had the head of a crocodile, and the priests of his temples kept sacred crocodiles and fed them on the most tasty cuts of meat and honey cakes. And of course, the mighty and mysterious sphinx, often shown in giant statues the size of pyramids, was a man with the head. Of a lion, for me, the animal gods are a large part of what makes ancient Egypt so fascinating. Along with the mighty pyramids, the ancient mummies, the rich treasures, and the barges floating down the River Nile, it really was a civilization like no other. And I'm delighted to dedicate this story to Dekayla in California, who is around five and a half years old. Her sisters Brooke and Samantha tell me that they listen to Story Nori almost every day, particularly while they colour after they eat dinner. Well, thank you so much to Kayla and Samantha and Brooke for listening to Story Nori and for supporting us on Patreon. We really do appreciate your support. For now, from me, Bertie. Goodbye. <laughs>